This anyway. is silly. Just silly. All right. Well, we're going to start now. Now is the official start point of the GGG podcast. Welcome in to episode 47. We are back after a week off and some interesting news happened while we were away, including some interesting news today that the with the PlayStation 5 Pro announcement, which we will talk about and, and get into it in, in just a little bit. But before we get into all of our stuff, remember to like and subscribe to our channel we really appreciate it and if you're listening to our podcast over on spotify or apple Podcasts, be sure to follow us over there as well so phil how have you been over this this labor day holiday have you had time for games were you busy barbecuing what was the situation i was not busy barbecuing i did get a dog and i have been playing video games wow uh but you know what i decided since i feel like it's such a, a such a core part of our show it's, we've done it a lot for streams that i was gonna wait to play more concord um and i'm just <laughs> so excited to get back to it um now that the show is back and running we can launch the game um i've got all the files still on my computer and i really can't wait to just see what's going on with my free gunners yep how are you, how are you doing <laughs> I'm good. I, uh, you know, um, got my Concord refund uh, through Steam, so that's been interesting. Uh, I kind of wish I just got cash instead of Steam cash, but I know I will spend that eventually. But yes, I, I have. Uh, I went away for uh, a wedding uh, for Labor Day weekend, uh, which was the primary reason we were off, and so I did that. And I've come back to two amazing game releases being warhammer space marine 2 and astrobot and so uh i and also we've had a heat wave here in la so this <laughs> this last weekend i was like there is no reason to leave my apartment i am staying in here i am blasting the ac and i am playing these two releases and that is exactly what i did so i've i've been a very happy gamer over the last couple of days that's a, that's a good weekend that's a good weekend right there mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. yeah let's uh let's i mean we should get into the game releases because i know we have thoughts and opinions and feelings about at least most of the games on this list oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah the first one being squirrel with a gun um <laughs> coming at Pack you it up other games <laughs> game of the year has been decided squirrel with a gun He's a little guy with big nuts and a big gun. Let's go. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> Squirrel with a Gun, it's a game that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. It took the internet by storm, I want to say, like, last year when it was announced. Um, mm -hmm. It is exactly what it sounds like. It is a squirrel. It ha it has a gun. And you. it's a shooter. You're, and you're a squirrel. Like, I don't I don't know how else to describe it. Um, I feel like if, if this... If Goat Simulator is Grand Theft Auto 3, Squirrel with a Gun is Max Payne. Like, okay, sure. That's that's the level they're operating on. Like yeah. It's a very silly game, but you can get a bazooka and launch yourself up into the sky with it. So that's pretty cool. Okay, okay. I, I don't remember that part in Max Payne, but... Uh, uh, well, that was he would just get high on drugs. Is oh, the okay. I difference see, in I, see, I, yeah. see, I see. I see. So, but yes, uh, it's getting kind of lackluster reviews. People are saying that it is fun for a little bit, and then after you play it for a while, you're like, okay, I get it. It's a squirrel with a gun, and that that is the shtick. And so, you know, uh, good good for a, a, a laugh and uh, you know have fun with your friends kind of a game. So, any uh, you think you're going to pick this one up? Uh, if it drops down to like five dollars, I am so in. You know, yes, I'm. Yes. I feel like we're good. We're here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> yeah, a squirrel with a gun keeps me interested for like thirty minutes. You done. You done right. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it's worth five dollars. I'd buy it if it was five dollars. So, mm -hmm. uh, but let's get into our uh, bigger releases. So, uh, one of the biggest releases this week, Warhammer Space Marine Two, a game that I have been incredibly excited about and have been waiting since the original space marine came out which i believe was back in 2011 oh my god holy smokes um, more than a decade yes has passed. more than a decade has passed um and so like uh, uh this game has come out it's trending so well online i think there's been uh two million 
uh, active users across all platforms, uh, as reported by uh, the Space Marine 2 team. Um, so that that's very exciting. Uh, and you picked this one up as well, Phil, um, as someone yeah. who has doesn't play as many Warhammer video games as I do. Uh, what were your initial impressions? Um, yeah. Yeah, I thought it <laughs> was good. I okay. I have a weird Shoot, thing about boom, it because boom, saw boom. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it's it's a very like interesting action game that is unlike most of the action games I've played. It's kind of like a mashup between Gears of War and also Dynasty Warriors in mm. its own way. Sure, uh, where you are fighting through hordes and hordes of enemies, and you are a machine that is literally tearing them apart. But you do have to be a little smart about it. Um, at first, the storyline and kind of the world is semi-incomprehensible, and the game makes the wild choice of the default setting being captions aren't on when half the people in that universe talk <laughs> like, like this. <laughs> <laughs> are like, what? Who are you? Um, so the other issue that I've had is I've, I've been playing after like morning shifts, and morning shifts I had to wake up at 4 a.m. midday. It's hot. I'm a little nappy. I have fallen asleep playing this game <laughs> because okay. the colors, it, it kind of uh, evokes back to like that 2010s like and before period of gaming where the colors were really like, uh, da- uh, I was going to say damp. And I, yeah, damp, muted. <laughs> Just <laughs> Yeah, dark, grungy. Yes. Uh, however, I have gotten further into it and I think I've become like invested because the gameplay is really, really fun. Like the guns feel great. The chainsaw gun feels, or the, ch- the chainsaw sword, the regular sword, all of it feels amazing to use. Uh, and the finishers, oh my gosh. So if you are struggling with the beginning of the game, just like play for a little bit longer, turn on those subtitles, allow yourself to get pulled into the story because it's really something special. Right on. Very very cool. Well, always. Interesting. Sorry, what are your thoughts on it? You're you're a Warhammer person. I, so the, well, like let's. So there are like Warhammer Warhammer people. I, I don't I don't do any miniatures or anything like that. So let's. Uh, I'm just gonna. That's a that's a money pit. There's, if you think ma- if you think Magic the Gathering, if you think Magic the Gathering is a money pit, <laughs> Warhammer is a bigger one. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, but I play a lot of Warhammer video games, um, and that's really where my knowledge in the Warhammer universe exists. I huge Space Marine One fan, as I've said many times on this podcast. I really like Space Marine Two. I am going to be publishing a full review video that's going to be on our YouTube channel, so I'm working on that right now. Um, but just for my bullet point thoughts, like I think it's really, really good. Um, but it does feel a little Force Awakens to me, where it's like the story in this game is almost identical to the story in the first one. And Interesting. that is a little um, disappointing. It, and, and again, like the story is not bad. I'm not saying it's bad by any means. It's just it's like really the exact same story. And so that that was a that was disappointing for me. But I think the presentation is incredible. I think that um, it's like truth. Like it's really true to uh, the Warhammer universe. They put so many Easter eggs in for like really hardcore Warhammer fans. And it just, it really feels like the last couple Warhammer games, including like Dark Tide to come out, it really makes you feel like you're in that grungy, horrific universe. Um, and so the immersion has felt really great. And and I think like it's it's kind of embodied a lot of things from other games. It, it does feel like Years of War, but the first one felt like Years of War. Um, mm. It, I think it took a lot of hints from God of War in this game, including like the basic, like I need to move this pillar out of the way loading screen. Um, So like, I really, really like the game. I do think that there are a couple of problems that people are not owning up to because they love Warhammer so much. Uh, I would say one of those problems is there are huge online problems that are not being talked about at all. I've had numerous uh, times of like not being able to party up with friends 
like getting stuck in loading screens, the game crashing, just hanging in a matchmaking cycle. Like the competitive matchmaking is not great. It also like after you finish a match, if you successfully get into one, um, it keeps the same people in your lobby unless they leave. And so it's That's like, weird. oh, that guy who kicked my butt last match gets he's going to kick it again because <laughs> it didn't re me. <laughs> so um, the the online space needs to be worked on. Um, yeah. So but that that's really my biggest uh, com- complaint with it. Right. Uh, as I, I think, you know, Warhammer can be a little bit scary for people to get like on board with. It's intense. It is. I do think that if you wanted to describe this game, one way you could do it is by saying, basically, you're Captain America in like a Fallout power armor suit, mm-hmm. and you're fighting Xenomorphs, and that's the game. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. That's yes. that's one great way into it. Uh, but yes. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a great way of putting it. Captain America in a yeah, power suit, power armor. Were you thinking like a Fallout? power armor or fallout power armor yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Right <laughs> yeah that... you're, you're stomping around it's great yes that is a great way to put it so yeah i'll be publishing that uh review uh out there uh but a game that has pulled my attention away from space marine 2 has been astrobot which is our other uh major release this week uh, we're going to be talking about Astrobot for our main topic, so stick around for that. I'm going to save my my thoughts and my feelings uh, for the end of the episode. But if you want to hear about Astrobot, um, the, you know, wait around or skip to the end. It's up to you. It's your decision. Um, yeah. uh, there is one more thing that came out last week that we need to discuss that I ooh. was anticipating, ooh. and that's uh, Harry Potter Quidditch. Champion. Oh yes, yes, of course. Yeah. I forgot. I forgot. Yes, it's a. Uh... It's pretty good. It's Quidditch. Uh, if you if you played the old one on like the original Xbox or the Xbox 360, I can't remember. It's more of that, but it's um it's a really fun like sports game, and it's got a lot of it's like a fully if you're playing on PlayStation, it's great. Uh, you don't need to buy a battle pass, but you are on like the season pass, and you're like unlocking stuff as you go. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't played online yet, but Same. still really really fun, really silly, like. A lot of cool mechanics in that game. So, yeah, it's. A, I mean, it's. It's. Tr- I, I've gotten maybe like an hour and a half, two hours of time with it. I haven't played online either. I've just been doing like the offline, like you know, the Hogwarts Cup and like that that kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. So it it took me a while to to futz around with the controls, but I learned like ah, using the left stick to go is the right way to play this yeah as opposed to using r2 to go and and like i was trying to do the r2a i know who was that rough um <laughs> so uh but yeah i think it's really fun and interesting and surprisingly has more content than i thought it was going to have especially for a playstation plus free game um mm-hmm. and yeah i would love to play uh online with you it's again it's a little tricky switching it's anytime you're learning like a new sport it's kind of like, wait, what do I, what is, should I be playing as the I? other position or like, I don't, um, so that has taken some orienting for me. Um, but I love that. And I don't know if this was the case in the old Quidditch game that you were referring to on the 360. Uh, but, um, the, oh God, I just lost my train of thought. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> there, there is some weird stuff in the game, like Ooh, leveling up the snitch. I was going to talk about the snitch. snitch. Um, I really like that the snitch is 30 points as opposed to the Harry Potter canon 150 points because that was clearly designed by a writer who didn't watch any sports or understand sports at all. (laughs) Because, like, what is the point of the rest of Quidditch if the snitch is such a big payout? And so in this game, with it being reduced from 150 to 30 points, it's like, okay, the snitch is a big factor, but it's not the end-all, be-all. You can still beat a team if you don't catch it. And so I really like that adjustment. The switch can th- the snitch can turn things around. The snitch can switch things up, uh, but <laughs> it is uh, yeah. I, I like the system they have for, for everything involving that. Uh, there's like a weird leveling up system that they've added to this game that is strange because you can like get better at certain skills 
And obviously you should put it into your chasers because there's three of them and they all level up together. Hmm. Um, but then you have to uh, level up the other uh, positions individually. And it's just, it's a little weird. Uh, but all in all, very happy got it for free. And if you're playing on PlayStation, yeah. I would say pick it up. Oh, yeah. If you're already a PS Plus subscriber, no reason not to pick it up. So mm-hmm. I downloaded it as soon as it was available. Uh, all right. So let's uh, jump into our news. Uh, and the first topic on our news list is something that's been enraging people in the latest Call of Duty beta. And that is the addition of Omni Movement, which is, uh, you know, this year's feature that they're adding into Call of Duty. Um, you know, very similar to 2K when they're like, we've got a new defensive s- system and dribbling. You, can, you, know, you can dribble sideways now. Yeah. yeah. And so, yes. <laughs> so Omni Movement, um, there's a, there, I mean, there's a number of specific things you can use it for, but essentially it's it's a lot of like diving and moving, um, uh, I guess like strafing. Like lateral movement. Yes. Yeah. A- and so, which, um, you know, presents new opportunities for players uh, to combat other players. It also has the addition of like, you, you can grab someone as a human shield and then your <laughs> mic is open to that person's mic. And so you can talk to the person when you're using them as a human shield, which is just like, God, you guys are doubling, doubling down on bullying in COD. Yeah. But whatever. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so glad that I'm gonna have to hear. Hey, Mister, I got you. Give me Fortnite bucks. Sorry, give me Roblox. Uh, Roblox bucks, or I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what kids are into. <laughs> Bust a gwitty. <laughs> yep, that's what the kids are doing. <laughs> <laughs> um so but yeah I, I don't i don't know it's it's in both empowering players to have a different like um offensive approach in cod but at the same time it's enraging players because there's certain things that the because uh, omni movement hasn't really been refined yet because it is a new system in the game um that like people are like jumping around corners and uh, the person who's being shot by that person jumping around the corner can't even see them on their screen because the yeah. the the strafing dive hasn't you know loaded in yet or whatever and so it's like how do I defend against this madness and I don't know I don't know um, so but it sounds like I'm it's, I'm gonna watch this from a distance <laughs> that's what the move is like. don't play COD play a better game. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, I think it's I think it's cool. They oh, I feel like like you said they are like the uh, John Madden or NBA Two K. We're like we've added a new menial feature. We are a yearly release. Here's something silly. Uh, maybe it'll be fun. Uh, I I miss the jetpacks when they were trying to ape what um, Titanfall was doing. But you know whatever. Remember there was like wall running and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it was Future Warfare. I can't remember the one it was. I think but. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't remember. Or, or like Titanfall, I know you got. Yeah, yeah. But then, anyway. yeah. Anyway, uh, but yeah, not not really much else to say about that other than it's going to be frustrating players, and I'm sure we'll see a lot of enraged uh, drama on Twitch and on YouTube. So uh, be looking right. forward to that, uh, social media fiends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, Let's uh let's jump to X Defiant Phil uh and yeah. we can come back to this other story. Uh so it since we're talking about COD, X Defiant, the free to play Ubisoft shooter that came out a few months ago, uh is doing something very offensive and interesting. A little bit of omni movement themselves. Uh mm-hmm. they are they are offering free currency for logins uh for nine days after the black ops beta ends and so this is a clear like hey you want some more shooter but the the beta is over come on down to x defiant you can we'll give you nine dollars who knows what that'll get you but maybe something so (laughs) i think it's an interesting way to entice players in do you think this is going to work at all um if listen i know that you play x defiant (laughs) sometimes if there's other people playing X Defiant, maybe, <laughs> maybe, son. Uh, check the here's the numbers. thing. 
this is the smartest thing that they can do because like a that nine dollars is essentially nothing they've made everything up they make the skins up they make the you're not gonna get like a good you're going to get a a skin for your character this that uh so that's a great thing on their end and also a, i think a smart way to get people to play this game that probably is a little bit more in line with the traditional call of duty like something that yes. is if if you don't like the omni movement if you don't like getting bullied by seven-year-olds come play x defiant mm -hmm. we've got the watchdogs guys <laughs> We've got Libertad. <laughs> you know, Libertad, you know, you know, that from game, from game. Uh, we got the, we got that guy with the three green dots on his head. Yeah, you remember him. You remember him. <laughs> Sam Fishman. Uh, yeah, so I, I haven't played X Defiant in like a month and a half, maybe two months, to be honest. Okay. Um, so Is again, this enough to bring you back, Paul? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, it's 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 enough to make me because I love free stuff. I do. I'm I'm such a sucker for free stuff. So I will log in and see if there's anything I can actually get with the currency. Like, can I get a season's pass or can I do something like that? So that'll probably get me back on it a little bit. Um, but I played it for like one solid month, and then I just kind of got sick of. Um, I think people were getting really good at it. And I went from being really good to being like, all right, um, especially after I got out of like the um, the new player matchmaking. It was like, oh, oh yeah. now now you're in with the hardcore people. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Welcome to the sweat. Yeah, I was like, I'd rather sweat in Helldivers. Thank you. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm OK. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd rather sweat with my friends than against them. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. So uh, speaking of Ubisoft. Uh, unfortunately, Ubisoft's investors are not very pleased with how the company is doing this year. And honestly, how the company has been doing over the last few years, uh, particularly with their big releases this year being Skull and Bones and Star Wars Outlaws. Um, obviously, we've covered Skull and Bones quite a bit. I said that I picked it up and I, I liked it for what it was, but it was not the game everyone wanted it to be. Um, and it's just never, it was never going to come back from that because it was just, the foundation was wrong in the first place. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was obviously a huge flop and now Star Wars Outlaws, while Star Wars Outlaws isn't a flop, it has not been selling that well. And so despite all these people streaming and doing all these things, um, you know, despite as all these advertisements that I've been seeing, Outlaws has severely underperformed as far as sales. And so the investors are encouraging Ubisoft to go back to being a private company as opposed to publicly selling on the stock market. Not the best thing to hear from your investors. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think Ubisoft can turn this around or is this the like sign of like they're final decline like we have assassin's creed shadows coming out this year and i that's, know th that's what i think they're the the like i don't know the ceos the people over at ubisoft are like wait just wait 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 we have a samurai game coming mm -hmm. just wait 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 it's gonna be cool i think that's what they're holding on to i do think maybe maybe we contributed to this by telling everybody not to buy star Wars outlaws, but instead to um, rent it using Ubisoft plus premium. Well, I mean, we got them subscribers for a month. So yeah, that's a, that's 18 bucks versus the what one twenty they were trying to charge yeah. for this game. Yeah. But it's like, uh, I, I feel like Ubisoft should have learned their lesson. Like Microsoft has made this mistake before. It's like, if you put it free, if you put a huge first party game that you dumped a lot of money into make, and you make it free on your little Game Pass thing, you're going to shoot your sales in the foot. Like, what are you mm -hmm. expecting? So, sorry. You, I you should you not off. be looking for sales at that point. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. You should be not looking for sales. You should be looking for subscriptions like that. They must know something that there is. There's got to be some metric, um, sort of the anti-rocket money equation, where <laughs> people just forget that they have, uh, you know, Ubisoft Plus, Xbox, yeah. uh not live, but you know, uh, all of that game pass is sitting in their things, re going, re going. There must be some math there that that is the best way to get in because otherwise, what they are doing, 
um, is the is one of the dumbest things in history to be like we are making this huge game attached to the biggest IP on the Western Front. You can have it for eighteen dollars, or you can have the same thing for a hundred and twenty dollars. Ooh, yeah, it's just like. It's dumb. It's and look, I understand the principle of like, uh, all right, eventually, it's gonna go to Ubisoft Pass or whatever it's called, mm-hmm. Ubisoft Plus. Um, but like, don't like again. You're shooting your release in the foot when you do this. This is what happened to Halo. Um, famously, it, it's like the Halo, the single player, did not sell because you could just get Game Pass. And like I'm sure more people stuck around from Game Pass because I I do think and I know I think you feel similarly that Game Pass is the best gaming subscription of all oh, the yeah. companies. Um, Amazing deal. Yeah, but it's it's like Game Pass, PlayStation is all right, um, mm. and then like Ubisoft. I'm just like I could buy all of these games on a sale for like ten dollars. So I don't know yeah. why I'm ever going to be a Ubisoft Plus subscriber. Or... Ubisoft games, you wait one month and they are at least fifteen or like you know thirty percent off. Like they drop crazy. Yeah. Uh, so, so, and yeah, honestly, Outlaws, and we talked about this on our last episode. Outlaws is not great. It's not bad, uh, you know, but it's just it's very glitchy. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, people are kind it, of it, lukewarm on it. The rough thing is too. I feel like a lot of people got uh, got this new subscription. If that is a metric of success for them, to try Outlaws, and Outlaws has in the first few hours some of the most punishing, uh, like instant fail stealth missions. Yes, that I have seen in a I've game in like twenty this. years. To, can yeah, you, could, it's you, uh, could you trash. elaborate a little bit more about this? Because I've seen this online, but I haven't. I haven't really understood what exactly they're talking about. Yeah, well, it's a game that uh, obviously prioritizes stealth because you're playing as a scoundrel, right? Right. Uh, but there is a lot of glitchiness to their, uh, I guess, intelligence on their characters. Like, if someone sees you before they even get to a phone sometimes, like an alert system, everyone will just know you're there. And in certain missions, when you're, like, sneaking into a base or sneaking into, like, a criminal uh, subdivision... If they see you, you get busted and it just goes to instant fail. You can't mm. shoot your way out. You can't do anything like that. Um, later in the game, that changes because of the reputation system. Like, oh, you're messing up your reputation with the pikes. So uh, instead of being instantly punished, you just you can't access as much cool gear as you would normally. But mm. in the first couple of hours when that system is introduced, there's one part where you have to get off of an Imperial ship. And I swear, there was one time I walked up to knock out a guard... And there was another guard glitched into him. So while I was stuck in the knockout animation, that other guard hadn't been hit and just saw me and called in the report. And I lost like 20 minutes because the save points on a lot of these stealth segments are terrible. Hmm. So again, I think it's a fun game. I also think it's like a 15 year old design game. Like it's just very weird. Sure. I mean, like, yeah. from what I've seen, the major criticism that I have for the game is the gameplay. It, the gameplay looks rough, and that's exactly, like, the stealth gameplay and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. we, we talked about Star Wars Outlaws last episode, so let's press on. We're, we got a lot of Sony-specific PlayStation stuff to talk about. So let's talk. Let's start, Phil, with the story you added uh, just before we started, which is pretty pretty out of this <laughs> world. But, yeah, why don't we start with that? Yes, yeah. Uh, So this is uh, Sony X president. I have to find his name. Uh, Let's see. Chris Deering. Yes, Chris uh, Deering. Is the former boss of PlayStation. He thinks that the game industry layoffs are not a result of corporate greed, and those affected should drive an Uber or take a year on the beach until the job market recovers. Um, Ex president, the... ex president, <laughs> ex president, ex president. But like, what? Okay, here's oh, here's man. the thing: to think that driving an Uber a pays anywhere near the same amount of money as like your Just career, job. any salaried position, <laughs> any salaried position anywhere ever, <laughs> or that you could just take a year and go to the beach because we all have a beach house, right? Yeah, like everybody has a little bit of extra scratch. It's just like a dime and a nickel, and you got a beach house. Mm-hmm. No, 
uh, yeah, it's it's one of the most insane things. People get in the games industry because they love working on games. It is a lot of artists, a lot of creatives, a lot of people with uh, with technical expertise that they worked hard to get. Not people who were just born rich or sociopathic uh, executives. Yeah, it's 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 really tough to like hear this when we see how much games industry uh, has made money. It is still the biggest form of entertainment on the planet. And still, a lot of these companies have been sticking with, oh, the game's out. We don't need half the staff. Um, yeah. I mean, Sony. <laughs> yeah. For, firstly, to uh, what was his name? Chris Deering. Yeah. Chris Deering, mm -hmm. like, go F yourself. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, this is just another, as, as you eloquently put, like, another very wealthy person who jumps around from CEO to CFO to d these upper crusty jobs who has no understanding of what the average person goes through and how demoralizing being laid off really is. And it's like, Oh, it's the, the job market's going to recover. And it's like, well, maybe what's happening right now in the game games industry is AI is being integrated into uh, in, in, into publishers, into, uh, you know, game cre creators themselves. And so that is going to affect the amount of jobs that there are because there's going to be certain jobs that are eliminated from that where, okay, AI can do that portion of it. And then the last little portion that we needed a person to do will delegate, will dele uh, delegate that to another employee. And so I do think that there will be some job recovery-ish um, as new positions are established, but it's not just going to, well, we can't just go to the beach house. And yeah. like both of these suggestions are so absolutely ridiculous. I'm happy that mm -hmm. he no longer works for Sony, but the fact that he ever did and he's out there spouting things like this just show how disconnected and what a freaking asshat he is. So this this reminds me of the PlayStation Three. Uh, you know when those released and the console prices were as ridiculous as they were, and the advice on the behalf of like you know when they ask people what do you expect to do uh, for people to be able to purchase this console, and the executives then said picking up an extra job is probably a good idea. What? No. <laughs> Yeah, I bet you Chris Deering was the executive who said that. I don't, I can't <laughs> say for sure, but I'm saying it's Chris Deering. I mean, I guess it's his mo now. So, Ugh. what could a banana be? Nine dollars. <laughs> uh. All right, uh, so let's move back to a huge disappointment and one that we were personally invested in on this podcast, and that is Concord has officially been recalled and refunded, and I really don't think we've ever seen anything quite like this in the gaming industry and if we never see concord again which i don't think is true which is what a lot of people are reporting but this this is a it will be a little footnote in the game industry history so like i i was astounded by this um but to me it sent a very clear message but before i get into my little rant about it phil why don't why don't you give me your thoughts on this I mean, it's an embarrassment. There's another other yeah. way around it. Is it is an embarrassment? Kind of a big whoopsie on uh, uh, the behalf of it was a Sony game, yeah. It was yeah PlayStation, yeah. Um, kind of a big whoopsie and so demoralizing to see new IP that obviously had a lot of thought put into it mm -hmm. get immediately like flushed down the toilet. To be fair, three hundred people were playing it on Steam at its height or something like that. Um, and there was a lot of people who were decided they were going to hate this game. Uh, there's a lot of uh, sort of culture war stuff around this game for yes. some reason. Like yes. it is a it is a silly first person shooter just to enjoy a thing. But uh, even outside of that, like I think Concord was a really really fun game. The shooting was great. They had a plan more so than a lot of games that release for like what they were going to do, how they were going to support it. And to see it flushed away like this is really just sort of like, I know it will eventually most likely come back, but from a game's, pres uh, what is it, a preservation, pres preservation standpoint, mm -hmm. sure, um, it is a huge bummer to know that like Concord as it existed then will never exist again. Uh, so, yeah, what I do you mean? What do you what are you thinking? 
I mean, I have a lot of feelings around this. Like I, I, I and I said in the video uh, that I posted about Concord before it was officially recalled um, that I think that they needed to switch to a free to play model. Um, and so I think that is the major reason that the game failed is, is because of the pricing. I think the pricing yeah. was completely out of whack and it pains me to say like, oh, we need microtransactions and currencies in games, but that that's what this failure has proven. It's like, I couldn't, when I was writing that video, it's like, I couldn't think of a first person competitive shooter game that has launched within the last five years that uh that was not free to play and like cod is its own thing because it's been around forever it's a known franchise but there's also warzone which is free free cod so it's like mm. halo infinite and apex legends and you know the finals and all these games that are free to play and so people aren't gonna just shell out 40 bucks um to to play this and so i think it should have launched free to play and i think that is what they are going to do um i hope that they do like a christmas or holiday release uh where it's a free to play holiday release and you know there's a battle pass and you can you know make progress faster and blah 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 and that way people can actually play the game because as you and i agree the gameplay is really good and yeah. when you're looking at a competitive first person shooter, what's the number one concern? Is the gameplay good? The gameplay mm -hmm. was good, the presentation was good, and just to quickly speak more about the presentation, I think there was there's a sect of gamers that accused this of being a woke game because they had pronouns in the game, you know, god forbid. And mm -hmm. and particularly what is getting clipped on YouTube and TikTok and various other social medias is the character Daw, who is an overweight character. And it's like in all of these videos or like like famous streamers like Asma Gold, who I freaking hate, um, mm -hmm. who's such a piece of garbage. Um, he sorry, but <laughs> makes me mad. No, no. And like, OK, I, can I can I about Asma Gold for a second? I thought he was like a centrist dude is how it was pitched to me. From, I was like, no, oh, he's just like a said. No, he's an insane like culture warrior uh, yeah. uh, alt fella. And one of my favorite facts about him, his house is a mess. He is. He famously doesn't clean, so there's like roaches living in his sink. It's disgusting. That, that's who had a problem with this game. Yes, but people, but people listen to him, and then you know that's also a problem. And like, for getting back to the character Daw, who is an overweight character in the game, it, it was all like people don't want to play as ugly characters. It's like first of all, there's 16 players or er, characters in this game. None of mm -hmm. them are ugly, and you're getting mad because one of them won. It wasn't like a it wasn't like a lineup of chubby characters. It was one singular character in the game is overweight, which I hate to tell you, gamers, most of us not in the best shape. Uh, and so, like, are you going <laughs> to fat shame one character out of 16 and you're not going to play that game because it, in it, it includes an overweight person? That's absolutely ridiculous. And if and if you don't want to play Concord because of an overweight character, you need to think about what you're actually judging. So anyway, there's, was a little, there is a, a contingent, heated. there's a contingent of Redditors and 4chan that are like, I just want to play as uh, alpha male and look at all the sexy girls. <laughs> like that, that is the type of person who typically cares about this type of stuff. Huge bummer to see this game go. Uh, yes. And I think this fumble is kind of, Kind of on us in terms of like us as gamers at uh, the community uh in terms of not adopting a new ip as well like as i said i think that is a thing where uh a strong new ip launch can happen uh and if the advertising isn't right we're just like oh it doesn't have deadpool in it so i don't care yeah um, you know the, mo the money listens and like people complain mm -hmm. about oh we don't get it there's no any there's no new ideas anymore it's another remake or a sequel or a rehash or a reboot. And it's like, yeah, because if we don't get out there and try new things, they're just going to keep pumping out the same, the same stuff, stuff. Yeah. over. And everyone complains about The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. But guess what? People watch Everybody it. And so it. they're going to keep making it because people, people keep watching it. 
So it's like try uh, new things, people. Try new things. Um, I'm really hoping that like for the holiday season, probably sometime in November, that we will get a relaunch of Concord as a free to play game, so I can fully play it on my PlayStation Pro, which I will purchase on November seventh for <laughs> seven hundred American dollars. <laughs> Well, what a great segue, Phil. Take, take it away from there. Uh, PlayStation Pro officially got announced. Mark Cerny dragged himself up on the screen oh. and was telling us about pixels oh, and AI-generated uh, uh, screen resolutions. Yeah, resolutions and one. Of, it was okay. Okay, I have a lot of feelings about this, and I wanna I wanna set like a little bit of landing space for us here. Okay, okay. I understand that I was watching this on my phone. Granted, it's the new iPhone. It's got a really high definition. Whatever. I understand I was watching it on YouTube. <laughs> and it was giving me like 1080p resolution. Mm -hmm. And I understand that it is not easy to show off the new things that your console can do on that uh, uh, setting, on, in those circumstances. That said, <laughs> when you show us two side-by-side -side screens <laughs> that are almost identical... And then expect me to give you seven hundred dollars for a disk driveless PS5, please. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Look at yourself in the mirror, and then hit yourself <laughs> <laughs> gently, gently, just a little wake up. You know. <laughs> oh man, oh man. I I similarly watched it on my phone, um, and I was like, God, I really can't see the difference at all and so i went over to my desktop and was like all right let's load in the res best resolution i can and and like i i could see a difference but i was like when i'm sitting on my couch and playing my playstation am i gonna like walk up to the tv and be like oh yeah oh okay <laughs> it is it is clear <laughs> it's it was one of the worst technology presentations that i have seen sony give and i factor in the playstation like vr headsets in with that and like not that those are like bad devices they just didn't have a good presentation um but like this was this is a this is awful this this is this is the worst tech like i'm very disappointed because i yeah, they, i already had low had expectations to... They had to like zoom, 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 zoom. You see that character in the back? Yeah. He wouldn't be there on the PlayStation 5, but he's there in the PS5 Pro. I don't care. <laughs> for real. It, it, it was <laughs> atrocious. And like, f f first of all, like one of the things they, they, they talked about all the games that were going to get this PlayStation 5 Pro update. And you know what they started out with? Here's The Last of Us. That launched on the PlayStation frickin' 4 that we remastered for the regular PlayStation, but buy a PlayStation Pro so you can play it slightly better. And, and like, that was the first one, and then they referenced, here's God of War, and here's Horizon. Other, two other games that also released on PlayStation 4. And I... What what they needed with this announcement is they needed a game that had either been announced but not shown yet or it was like a brand new, hey, we are releasing this game with the mm. PlayStation Pro. It ships with it kind of a thing. This game mm. utilizes the full power of the PlayStation Pro where you can actually see a freaking difference where you don't have to go back to a game that you played three years ago and be like, oh yeah, that looks nice and then stop playing hey, look, it. Another pixel. Yeah. yeah. And, and like, and the price tag of 700 freaking dollars is ridiculous. It is mm. absolutely ridiculous. Look, I get it. You know, also silently, it's been reported that Sony's raised the price on their DualSense controllers and everything. And when I saw that, I was like, all right, well, this is kind of inflation happening. This is Sony catching up to inflation that's happened after COVID. I kind of get it. But the the $700 for the PlayStation 5 Pro is absolutely ridiculous when it essentially yeah. doesn't do anything. Um, and it's... It is five hundred dollars for the PlayStation. Uh, it's the same thing that I paid four hundred dollars for. It's the uh, digital edition of the PlayStation Four because it doesn't have a disc drive, which is again 
insane. As someone who doesn't play a lot of games that way, if I'm buying the premium product, I want every bell and whistle on there. I want the disk drive. I yeah. want every sort of aux that I need to work any sort of TV. Um, yeah, this is... I I kind of wonder, and this is maybe a bit of conspiracy theory stuff, if maybe they were supposed to show like Venom, like the, the Insomniac Venom game with this, because I know they'd probably be on track to release sometime around the holidays if it wasn't for the leak. Um, mm, okay, yeah. And I, I wonder, because they showed a lot of Spider-Man, I know it's a big seller for them, and I know that Insomniac, I mean, two of their games were the games that they showed off as like, here you can really notice uh, what the visuals can do. Yeah. So that's that's my theory as to probably why they waited a bit longer to show this and why they ended up showing it with a bunch of old games that we've all already played. Yeah, I think, you know, that's a good theory. Like, um, honestly, like, I would have held the release for when they had a game ready to fully utilize this technology instead of mm -hmm. all these games that I'm, like, I platinum God of War. Like, I'm not going to, I mean, I love the game. I do. And sometimes I'll play it for fun. But it's like, I'm not going to buy a PlayStation 4 Pro just to be like, let me go replay through God of War. Or like, they're showing off, other games are showing off. Ghost of Tsushima, another PlayStation 4 launch. Like, yeah. um, and like, I the digital PlayStation 5 is now $450 because now they only sell the, the slim versions. Um, mm, yeah. So like, but it's like, Two hundred and fifty dollars more, to for for like oh well you don't you don't have to choose between actually you still have to choose between performance and and fidelity and fidelity and it's like I thought that the whole point of this is that we wouldn't have to choose bro that you would just do all of it and so I, I, my theory about this whole thing is I think Sony has recognized that Xbox is stepping out of the race. And they're like, if you want a premium, we can do what we want. <laughs> yeah, because we don't we don't have a major competitor anymore. Nintendo's still around, but they compete for a different market than Sony does. Xbox is really the only other market that they you know the only other rival they have. And now that they're not pushing their consoles, it's like we can price it as whatever the heck we want. Um, and so I think you know the streamers, the the premium gamers, they'll they'll pick this thing up, but like. Maybe eventually I'll get a PlayStation Pro, but I don't see that happening within the next two years uh, minimum. I think I, it's two things. I think it's crazy that we bought PlayStation 5s when they launched for less than they are available now. <laughs> That's insane. Yes, That's not how things should work. But um, I think additionally, it is... Uh, it, oh, 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 it has now become a race between sony and pc yes like those are the two and i think maybe they're realizing they can go a little bit higher in their price racket because if you mm -hmm. try to get a pc that is like on on par you're paying around 800 dollars, maybe a grand although you pay 1400 dollars and you get something that is going to outlast the ps5 for generations uh yeah maybe i don't i don't know that's, pcs that's... can get pretty expensive so i mean that's a they, tr they can like i don't i don't think you could get a pc for 800 dollars that does what a playstation 5 can a regular playstation 5 uh yeah so i like, think you're probably paying at least a thousand yeah but and then you also have to factor in with a pc it's like you need the accessories that aren't going to come mm. with you need the monitors the speakers that yeah with a playstation you need a tv but most people have a tv in their homes so yeah so yeah but yeah ri ridiculous announcement i hate it and i'm a big sony <laughs> guy but i hate this i absolutely hate this so this is you know uh, and i've never heard anyone say this but i can imagine people calling us sony ponies because we're usually riding pretty hard for uh for what they're doing over there well we love spider-man like i mean we love spider-man we love spider-man so <laughs> <laughs> and we love someone else Oh, yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> so we also love, or at least I love, Astrobot so freaking much. Uh, so let's get into Astrobot, our other major release 
this week. So first of all, just a little tidbit in the news. Astrobot is going to be getting some free DLC. You do not have to have the digital deluxe edition or anything like that. It's going to include some new levels, uh, like a speed run mode. Um, and so like lots of little new Easter eggs and features and, and stuff like that. We don't know the full details of the DLC yet because the game just came out, but supposedly it's going to be come out coming out before the end of this year. So I'd probably again time that into a holiday release window where they can remarket and galvanize sales again um but to get into astrobot this game has taken the gamerverse by storm because it is getting crazy high reviews that i i don't know about you phil i was not expecting the game to be this good i i was not I think it has a 94 on Metacritic right now, which if you're familiar with Metacritic, a 94 is not an easy score to get. Um, so it's it's getting nines and tens and or four, five out of fives, maybe a couple four out of fives, you know, at, at different uh, gaming news outlets. So people are absolutely in love with it. They're saying it's one of the best uh, platformers of all time. Uh, and comparing it neck and neck with Mario, which is something that I don't think any PlayStation platformer has ever really done. Like, it's had good platformers. We had Crash Bandicoot and Spyro and Ratchet and uh, Clank. Ratchet and, and Clank and Jack and Dex. Or I said Jack and Dex. Or, you know, like like lots of, lots of those were good, but we haven't really had any modern ones. And this one, seeing it really be at the quality level of a Mario game is incredible. Um, I've played a lot of it. I've probably put about 15 hours into it. Um, I absolutely love it. I My expectations were really high because I did not buy this until after I saw the reviews. Um, and even with those high expectations, it still managed to impress me. Um, so yeah, what I mean, do you have any questions about, you haven't had a chance to play this, Phil? Like, are, yeah. you, you you must be, like, suspicious. Because I was suspicious. I was like, this kid, I mean, it's it can't be that good. It's just a freaking you jump and you punch and, like, I don't get it. So, what's ch- give well, me the suspicion. Let's go. Here's my thing. I feel like I made a whoopsie slightly. Because I've been spending more money on games lately. Uh-huh. And I'm trying to, like, rein in that budget a little bit. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, and I got... I got myself Warhammer. Mm-hmm. I got Black Myth the week before that. Mm-hmm. I have been spending some money on games. And uh, I am kind of bummed that I didn't <laughs> factor this into my budget. <laughs> I wish I had gotten this instead of probably Warhammer. Probably Warhammer. Yeah, I think yeah, I yeah. would probably enjoy this a little bit more. Just as I said that Warhammer's sort of color uh, puts me to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but here's here's the thing. I guess my main suspicion is... The gas, the absolute fire, the absolute nuclear fission that was happening on the free built-in game that came on the PS5 mm-hmm. that was Astrobot. Yes. I guess I wonder if they can keep that and the sort of novelty and the ever-changing nature of it going uh, for the entire run of the game. That is my main suspicion. That is my main, like, are, we, are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? That's why? Uh, 100%. They can yeah. like everything that was in <laughs> Astro's playroom that launched free on your PlayStation five. If you have a PlayStation five, everything about that game, like you can tell, like this game is a direct, like it's the same gameplay. Uh, there are some mechanics that they bring back from Astro's playroom uh, into Astro bot. Um, but it is everything Astro's playroom was and more Then they're just, it's just more, 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 with uh, fun mechanics uh, used in different ways. Every single mission, or every single level, I should say, it's just got, it's so good. Like, all of the levels, and, like, most of the levels, like, they're only, like, you know, 10, 15-minute things, you know, even if you're exploring and whatnot, but they're just, you're never not having fun in the Mm. game. And it's, you don't really play a lot of games like that nowadays, I feel like, uh, where you're just constantly, the, the, the developer put fun first for everything. And like one of the concerns I had 
was like I was I was concerned that the game was going to be too easy or it was going to be too too kiddish. And it's like I would say that the first like world of levels um, is is pretty easy. But after that, you will find levels that will challenge you. And there's also like a like a slew. I think there's 12 different like challenge levels specifically. Uh, actually, 13, I think, because there's a final one once you do all those. Um, and they're, they're, it's hard. It's not just, it doesn't just give it to you. Um, there's all of these boss levels that are really well done. Every single world that you beat has this huge boss level. And then they have a themed level based on one of the big PlayStation franchises. So it's like, this is an entire level built as God of War. Uh, in Astrobot, this is an entire level built as Uncharted in Astrobot. Uh, they, uh. they do a Loco Roco one, uh, which I don't know if you remember what that is. Um, uh -huh. Like it was a PSP game. It was one of the funnest levels in the game, and it's because it just feels completely different than any of the other levels that you've played in the game. And so that one's amazing. And then the last cluster of worlds has a boss for every single level up until you get to the last uh, boss in the game. And so it's just the design is impeccable. And uh, you, to try and put a bow on my thoughts here, I think the difference for me when comparing this to a Mario game, because I'm not and I'm not at all trying to crap on Mario games, because uh, many Mario games, I think Mario Galaxy 1 was probably my favorite uh, Mario game and recent, not so recent memory. <laughs> but um, I think what you're seeing is you're seeing a Mario game that is not burdened down by Nintendo's lack of hardware and technology. Mm. And so it's yeah. like you're actually seeing something that's like crystal clean. It runs runs in 60 frames per second all the time. The haptic feedback on the controller is freaking incredible. You feel every single thing that is going on in the game. You feel it in your hands and it adds another level of immersion that most gamers don't even think about half the time. And also like for Mario, I feel like in Mario there is a sense of sense of like aimlessness and not in, not not in a bad way but kind of in like a dated video game design way where it's like we made this area go and figure out what you have to do whereas in Astrobot there's very much a path where i almost mm -hmm. feel like it's this perfect fusion between Mario and Sonic where it's mm -hmm. like you, we want you to explore but also this is the path so go to do the path um, yeah so i i'm completely blown away by by the game i i love it I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, well, <laughs> guess I'm gonna have to get that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go drive Uber, Uber, or go take a year yeah. at the beach, and you should be able to afford it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. Sound advice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Man. Well, hey, I, I guess it's. I'm very happy to know that like Sony has that. Because uh, I feel like they, you know, for a long time, Astrobot was, in its first incarnation, was a VR game. Like, you mm. would help them get through levels, like, side scrolling or whatever. Um, and then, just as, like, a little added oomph to let you know what the dual uh, DualSense could do, they built this game that, you know, the PlayStation 5 launched, we all got it, and there was, like, three games to play. And then we played this game, and it was the best thing on the console, and sadly, it was only, like, five hours long. Mm -hmm. Um so I'm glad they took their time and made like a full game. And I don't know. It's just cool to see that, you know, while, like we said, Sony is no longer competing with Microsoft. Sony is doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. At least they're taking a swing at Nintendo and being like, look, we can make a really beloved uh, platformer and we have a character that everybody loves. We've got this. So. Yeah. Serious. Like it did, did if, if Astrobot is not the Sony mascot now, like I don't know who is. Like, oh, yeah, he has to be. Yeah, it is uh, mascot made. Like God, <laughs> God damn. So, like God bless it. As soon as you can, I would encourage you to to play it. Or if you you know if you want to st stop over, you know, and uh, play it in person. Like it yeah. is, it is just so much freaking fun. Um, like I am, my uh, girlfriend is out of town right now. And she's coming back tomorrow, and literally, I'm I'm excited just to have her play it because she hasn't <laughs> seen it before. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so. I think, like, you know, my, my girlfriend doesn't play games much, but seeing a game that you know your girlfriend will probably be into yes is just very exciting oh it is it is because you're yeah. like you'll have fun and you also won't have a rough time like you won't have to learn yeah. all these complicated things it's not demon souls <laughs> it's mm. not it's, Elden you got Ring. a jump button you got kind of a punch button you're yep. fine you could do a spin whoa, whoa. Mm. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's still fun it doesn't matter that it's so simple it's still fun it, uh, it doesn't make any sense <laughs> Sometimes you don't need all the bells and whistles, you know. Uh, Life's weird that way. It is. It is. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Uh, any more thoughts, Phil? We're starting to run out of time. Any more questions you had for Astro? I did my whole long rant about how much I love it. No, I just got to buy it. That's the, that's I'm, so, the... I'm sorry, man. I, You know, I'm sorry. You my question is, why didn't I do it sooner? <laughs> I think, you know what I will say? Sony should have advertised this a little bit better because... I knew that September was going to start heating up, and I was like, okay, well, you know, Star Wars, I got that with the Ubisoft thing. Oh, yeah. Paul and I were, you got me excited about Warhammer, I think. And I mm-hmm. am very, I'm very much enjoying Warhammer, still playing Black Myth. Um, and I forgot that Astrobot was coming out, and I forgot to, like, plan for, oh, I'm going to get Astrobot. So, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get it. I'm not, I'm probably not going to wait for a sale. I have heard, I guess, uh, one of the things that I've been a little bit bummed to hear is that the sales on Astrobot are not meeting Sony's expectations. I'll have to find a new source. Um, I mean, I mean, because... probably because, mm-hmm. like, honestly, I think there was a lack of marketing. But mm-hmm. now that it's been getting great reviews, like when a game gets above a nine, and like again, it's getting ten out of tens, five out of fives mm-hmm. on many sites. Um, I I might do a review on Astrobot myself, and it's it's gonna be a high rating. So like, <laughs> um, uh, spoiler alert, ten. <laughs> um, so like, I think with the reviews, um, there's something that people are not going to be able to ignore, and with the free mm-hmm. DLC coming around the holiday season, I think that'll galvan- galvanize sales again. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is a word of mouth kind of a thing and also like sony if if you put out a great game and it doesn't sell like that's a failure of marketing that's not yeah that's not the company's the the production company's problem for for like if it's a if it's greatly reviewed that's not their fault so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but yeah I, th- I think that's that's pretty much it uh, for this episode, I'm really excited to be back in the saddle. A uh, little bit of uh, news is that we are going to be celebrating our podcast birthday. Oh my goodness. Next week. Uh, so we're going to be doing a special episode. Phil and I have to talk about what exactly that entails. But we're going to do something special a little bit uh, out of the ordinary. Maybe, maybe we'll get up to some fun things. Uh, so be looking forward to that uh, next next week. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's gonna gonna do it for us, Phil. We we are at time. We did it. Another show successfully onto the books. Yes, the books of <laughs> YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> And Spotify. <laughs> Spotify. <laughs> All right. Oh, goodness. Well, uh, thank you for listening, everyone. And we will see you next week when we are a year old.